For most of human history, diamonds have been the ultimate luxury item. Useful, beautiful, hard to come by, and impossible to recreate. Most of them formed a billion or more years ago, deep in the Earth's mantle. Way down there, the pressure and heat is just right to crystallize carbon into diamond instead of graphite. It's that crystalline structure that gives diamonds their unique durability. They shot to the surface long ago by volcanic eruptions, and the abrupt drop in temperature locked all of those bonds into place forever. Diamonds are dramatic and improbable, so they're immensely valuable. Except that part about being impossible to recreate, it's not true anymore. Historically, the diamond industry has a lot to answer for. It operated like a large price-fixing cartel for most of the 20th century. It's implicated in horrifying conflicts in Africa and elsewhere, and it's done significant environmental damage. This we know. But these days, the industry is grappling with a whole other curveball. Man-made diamonds are on the rise, and fast. They're cheaper than natural diamonds, and they're not knockoffs. Both natural diamond and synthetic diamonds are diamonds. They are carbon, composed of a carbon in cubic structure. Kind of a, extremely difficult right now to separate them visually. That's Wu Yi Wang, a lead researcher at the Gemological Institute of America. He talks us through how the industry ended up here. And for the record, these are cubic zirconia, actual knockoffs, not real diamonds. We don't have that kind of budget. Starting in the 1950s, scientists began growing diamond crystals up here on the Earth's surface, and they could do it in days or weeks, not millennia. The first method that worked, high pressure, high temperature, or HPHT, relies on a reaction chamber heated up to 1600 degrees Celsius, and as much pressure as you would feel on your fingertip if you balanced a commercial airliner on it. HPHT technology basically is uh, mimicking the natural process how the diamond formed in the Earth's mantle. A more recent technique called chemical vapor deposition accomplishes the same task and at much lower pressure and temperature. The process involves methane gas and microwaves, and honestly, it's beyond confusing. The Gemological Institute of America likes to describe it as carbon atoms floating down like snow and accumulating, or depositing, on a tiny diamond seed. Since the 1950s, most lab-grown diamonds have been small and dark in color, so they've been used to make things like saw blades and drill bits. But in the past six or so years, the technology has improved dramatically, making synthetic diamonds bigger, clearer, more pure, and next to impossible to tell apart from natural diamonds. Which is fine for drill bit manufacturers, but it puts the jewelry industry on notice. We have seen more synthetic diamonds that come through to GIA, many of them unknown, so that is, they're coming to us and people didn't know that they were uh, synthetic. That's Tom Moses, an executive vice president at the GIA. He and Wu Yi pointed to twin challenges that are facing the jewelry industry. First, lab-grown diamonds are visually identical to natural ones, but around 30% cheaper. So if the two get mixed together in supply chains, value gets really muddy. The GIA is one of a few organizations that offer sophisticated testing services to verify the origin of your diamonds. To give you an example, of, you know, we might have to test on a given day in our laboratories around the world 50,000 small diamonds between one and two millimeters. So we're talking about doing that testing and sorting in between, say, one and two seconds per stone. The second challenge is ubiquity. As the tech improves, the production is going to go through the roof. Chinese companies in particular are poised to flood the market with smaller diamonds. They've historically been focused on industrial uses, but as oil drilling slows down worldwide, they could easily pivot, overwhelming jewelry supply. In one run, they probably can grow 10, 20 carat of uh, small many diamonds, but it takes only a few hours to produce that many amount of gem quantity small stones. They can produce 200,000 carat of a diamond like this in one month. For now, moneyed interests are carefully following these trends. Bain & Company, the consulting giant, puts out a state of the diamond industry type report every year. They emphasize the need for the three Ds to keep synthetic diamonds from polluting the natural supply. Detection, disclosure, and differentiation. And a few of the biggest diamond companies have teamed up to launch a Hearts and Minds ad campaign called Real is Rare to maintain demand for natural diamonds. But I will spend my future with you. And it will be wild. It will be kind. And it will be real. But the technology behind lab-grown diamonds will only improve, which has the industry wondering what comes next. 
After all of this research, we really wanted to see some lab-grown diamonds for ourselves. So our team in San Francisco visited the showroom at Brilliant Earth, a jeweler that sells both natural and synthetic gems. A place like this is theoretically ground zero for the battle between the two kinds of diamonds, but not if you can comfortably market both. Some consumers really want something that's natural, that's mined from the earth. They like the history of diamonds that are created billions of years ago. That has a certain meaning to them. And then other customers are really excited about the environmentally responsible characteristic of lab diamonds, that there's no need for additional mining. That's a big draw. Our team spent half an hour filming both natural and artificial diamonds and struggling to keep track of which was which. Honestly, it felt silly to even try, which is really the point. There are billions of dollars backing both natural and man-made diamonds, there's all the painstaking work of detection, disclosure, and differentiation, and there's the ever-advancing technology and science. But ultimately, these are two products without any practical distinction, and the industry is going to have to reckon with that. The sales rep put it best. That's, at the end of the day, what matters most about, you know, the whole, whole diamond industry, is that you have something that can play with light and <laughs> hey everyone, do you think that artificial diamonds should count as real diamonds? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Verge Science.